Welcome! Welcome to your favorite Tennessee Titans podcast, Tennessee Titans Weekly. Jacques! Hulk! Jacques! Hulk! What up, folks? What is good, Titans fans? What is popping besides popcorn? What's good, man? <laughs> what is happening? Man. Jacques! Back. We're yes, here, sir. Brother. Yes, yes, sir. We, we, got some, we got some things to cover, man. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yeah, we back, man. So, yeah, we got some things popping in the offseason that you you keep hearing about and things that keep rumbling. So, it's going to be pretty an interesting show at, with that. So, yeah, for sure. Definitely, for sure. definitely, definitely. For sure. for sure. And for those that have been, you know, listening in on the news, uh, again, the Titans have been in the news on um, several different caveats. And, um, you know, we're going to definitely talk about that, even, you know, Twitter, Instagram, the news. Mm -hmm. You know, to, the Titans' name, their names is flying out there, man. So, man. for sure, man. So, first of all, we want to just say, hey, if you have not subscribed to our channel, hit that subscribe button, folks. Hit that subscribe button for sure. Um, you know, check us out again on Twitter, Titans Weekly 24-7, and on Instagram, Tennessee Titans Weekly. Make sure to check us out there as well, too, for sure. Right, right, exactly. And like you said, Titans Twitter, Instagram, Facebook is going crazy. It is, man. So, it is. Definitely, definitely, dog. It is, man. So, Jacques. Yes, so sir. we haven't talked a lot about our free agents, man. Um, nope, we haven't you know, got a guy, we haven't had a chance to when it happened. So that's right, that's right, man. So the Titans have signed a few free agents, in particular Bobby Trees, young Bobby sure. Trees. Well, Robert Woods, aka Bobby Trees. I uh, think <laughs> that nickname is pretty cool, by the way. Right. And um, the tight end Austin Hooper. You know, what I'm saying two guys that we signed that will definitely be starters on our offense and things, man. So. Man, talk to us, bro. What you think, man? What do you think about the free agent signings and just the free agent, just the free agent news and everything that's going on right now with the Titans, man? Oh, uh, you know, I know it is they're not popular picks, but they're pitch picks that fit our scheme, right? Yeah. Um, I know the Julio pick was a flag. We 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 made a big splash last year. Like last year was the the star splash, right? right. This year, I think it's the productivity splash. Um, let's we can start with uh, uh Hooper, right? Uh, hey. You like you said, you've seen his his breakout game was with against the Titans, what two two years ago yep. when they played the Titans in the, with the Falcons. His productivity is there. Yeah, when he got to Cleveland, I feel like he didn't really do too much, but it could be the system that he was in, right? Yeah, which nine times out of ten, most of the time, if you don't fit that system, you're not going to be productive. So I like the I like the the pickup of Austin Hooper, and he, he's tight end number one. Be something that we really didn't have last year. Yep. And you can make an argument that it was either scheme. Either it was uh, a tie down in it's just so many elements that come into it. But I trust Hooper over what I trust what we had last year with Ferkser and, and the tight end room that we had. And then let's talk about Bobby Trees, which is a crazy nickname, right? Yep. Uh, Robert Woods. Um, when he was with the Bills, he was dope, right? That's when I seen him. When he was with the Bills, he was amazing. And then, of course, he gets with L.A. or St. Louis at the time, but L.A., man, Still amazing. He's used as an in and round guy, a gadget guy. You can handle the ball. You can turn the ball over. You can do this. So it's several different things and factors that you can do with the ball that you can, definitely, definitely with Robert is amazing. So he, to me, and this can be a controversy thing that I'm about to say, but he's an upgrade over Julio Jones. <laughs> okay. Facts, no paper. And, and I feel like he's going to be more productive than Julio Jones. Now, I know Julio's hurt. I like, let me say this. I would prefer to have to keep Julio because I feel like you can get that continuity with Julio. And if you would have kept that continuity, you would have been fine. And him and Tannehill could have gathered that relationship and then went from there, right? Yep. But I know the price tag is very high when it comes to that. So you right. got a, a cheaper option, but you got a productive option that you can bring in and say, hey, his productivity, we know day one. Now we know the injury that he has. That's going to play a huge role. And we Titans tend to do that a lot with receivers that we get injured players and bring them in and they don't start in training camp and they, they hamstrings and this. So that's my, I'm a little concerned with that and how fast he can come back and get that, that and get in the rhythm with Tannehill. But I like the signings, man. What about you? Yeah, I like the signings too. Facts, no paper, bro. And everything you stated, um, it's an upgrade, especially the tight end position with Austin Hooper. Uh, you know, when you look at Ferkser last year, I think that was a, a major disappointment for him last year. We just said on our grade show that the tight end group gets an F. And, right. you know, I think they actually probably performed the worst of all the members of our team was the tight end position. So we had no choice but to get a tight end, whether it be through the draft or through free agency. And I really think it's a great pickup. And, again, 
I've seen Austin Hooper play live. Um, one with uh, actually when he was with the Cleveland Browns in Nashville, when they played the Browns here in in the city, and as well as when the Titans played the Atlanta Falcons. I was at the Falcons game in Atlanta. Austin Hooper had 14 catches. Austin Hooper was catching everything. I said, man, who is this guy, right? Wow, right? So Austin Hooper is definitely a great route runner, catches mm -hmm. the ball very well, seems to be very smart, very instinctive when you watch tape, okay? He knows how to get open. Eh? He must be much better of, of an upgrade than Ferguson. But the right. one thing about Hooper, his issue is that he can't block. He's not a good blocker. Mm. Nor is Ferkser either. So yeah, I prefer right. Hooper. But you know, just you know, just just know that Hooper has his struggles in blocking. He's just a big receiver, man, to be honest with you. But um, but right. a major upgrade at tight end. Bobby Trees, of course. You know, this guy here has a mentality of a dog. Uh, you know, he helped to create the culture in LA. Like they look at him like as an OG. Because again, he, he was did. in St. Louis he and he's an LA dude. And, you know, mm -hmm. to come back to L.A. in an NFL team, I'm sure that made, you know, made him happy. And he got hit, signed a nice contract. Um, but your Cooper Cup and those guys, you know, he, he was, you know, Todd Gurley and them guys, you know, they was like, they really looked up to Bobby Trees. And so, um, right. you know, my hope for Robert Woods is that he will be healthy because he knew towards ACL like week 12. So, mm -hmm. you know, he hopefully he will heal enough at some point, you know, probably at the beginning, probably not. But at some point he'll be out there for a six round pick. You make right. that trade. You do yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And. Robert Woods is a beast, dude. He's, yep. as you stated, he can run the ball. There was times he was playing, he was lined up at running back. He mm -hmm. was kind of like Debo Samuel before Debo Samuel or Cordell Samuel. Patterson. He's kind of, yep. he was that dude. He was that at USC as well, too. Like, Robert Woods is is mm -hmm. very, very productive. I even think about the Rams-Chiefs game. There was like 80 to 85 or something that was crazy that game. <laughs> Robert Woods had a hell of a game that game, too. So, I'm very happy of the free agents that we've signed. I know we've lost some. You know, we lost Rashawn Evans to the Atlanta Falcons. J.M. Brown to the Raiders, Dan Krunkshack today to the Bears. That's just part of the business. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, if for what we've added, you know, we've lost Jenkins. He's, you know, he got cut. He still hadn't been signed yet. And I don't think he will, not at the price he wants. But the guys that we've added so far has been pretty good. You've mentioned, it's a hell of a point, Jacques. Shout out to you, is we're not making big splashes. And this is one reason why, because we still got to pay some folks. We got to pay Arthur Juan Brown and Jeffrey Simmons. So I think they're just holding that money, that cap money, just holding it for next, the next year, not this year, but the next year. So, yeah, man. Right. Yeah. Now that's facts, man. Facts, no man. paper, man. Great points. For sure. For sure. Uh, so, we're going to get in our next segment. And this became a big deal, right? On Twitter, it blew up, man, and it, it was something. The A.J. Brown, quote, unquote, news slash trade rumors, right? Yep. And this came up because of a, a Jets uh, beat writer, I think, that doubled down and tripled down because they couldn't get Tyreek Hill <laughs> and yep. then tried Debo Samuels and DK Metcalf. So, man, elaborate, man. What did you think of that, that crazy news uh, that came out about A.J. Brown getting traded? Well, I think, I think there's some validity to the news, to be honest with you. I, okay. I think, talk I think to us, Jets, huh? Talk, talk to us. I think the Jets, I think teams are like that are tinkering. I think to see what's up there, right? So what's out there, right? Um, right. Because when you see – you know, Zay Jones getting paid and Christian Kirk getting paid. Those bottom tier teams could be like, let's just right. mess it up for everybody. Like, we got the right. money to do this. We can pay right. you more than what the Titans or anybody else could probably pay you, Act, you know, honestly, right? Mm -hmm. Though you, you live in New York, cost of living is much more, you know, mm -hmm. $3 million home in Nashville is probably $8 million in New York. Just, you know, those things should be considered too. But right. I do think that, not to say A.J. Brown, he's now he's stirring it up. But, you know, receivers are – those receivers, that class, receiver class, Debo Samuel, D.K. Metcalf, A.J. Brown, that's mm -hmm. a great class. That's a great class. It and is. I think, you know, these teams are using this as leverage to say, let's just stir it up a little bit, right? Get these players uncomfortable to say, hey, the next year we got the money. We're in New York. We got the money. And the question is, uh, man, <laughs> about A.J. Brown, about that contract. So mm -hmm. we want to sign A.J. Brown for sure. Right. For sure. Right. I mean, 100 percent. Right. You pay the man for sure. Right. And he'll make right. more than what he's making now. There's no question about that. But the question becomes, what type of contract do you sign him to? Is he Devontae Adams, the hot level? Stephon Diggs level? I don't think so. I don't think he's right. up there yet, y'all. OK, numbers speak to that. His mm -hmm. his catch, his catch percentages are like in the 60 percent range. Right. What I mean is. 
when the ball is in his area, you know, when he catches the ball, he's amazing. Like his rack yards is un- maybe the best in the league. Him and probably Debo Samuel, they're probably one and two in that regard. Catch the ball, break tackles, go for a touchdown. But there's a lot of drops. And there's a lot of reasons why the ball does not get caught in his area for some reason. Mm -hmm. And for him to get that type of contract, he's going to have to step it up this year. Mm -hmm. He had 68 catches last year and like 800, like something yards. So for this year, he come out hundred catches, 1300 yards receiving eight or nine to 10 touchdowns. AJ Brown could really start talking like, look, I I might want that Devontae money. I'm younger. I'm about to reach my prime. And all the expect he should ask for that because hey, why not? See what the market says, right? And then if anything, all you can do is I'm, I'm in sales. The best thing to do is go for the go for the stars and hope for the moon, as they say, right? So you get that, and that's cool, right? But you know, I don't think anybody would pay him up to that that salary. But I do think, oh, he definitely will get some competition out there from from his contract if he does what I just advised. Now mm-hmm. next year, if he plays 13 games, it gets maybe 70 catches, 900 yards, maybe six touchdowns or whatever, and, you know, don't play every game, gets hurt a lot of things like that, then, you know, he should still get paid, but he can't be walking in, like, with a hat on talking about almost some of that, that D-Hop money, almost some of that Cooper Cup money, right? It, it, that that soon-to-be Justin Jefferson money, maybe <laughs> soon-to-be three years down the road Jamar Chase money. So <laughs> A.J. Brown has to ball out this year. Right. You cannot ask for Devontae Adams' money. And I know Titan fans might think opposite. All I ask you to do, look at the numbers. It's a, mm-hmm. a, a, a contrasting uh, comparison for sure. And I want A.J. Brown, Jacques. You know I'm a big A.J. Brown fan. You are too. Right. A.J.'s one of the best receivers we've ever had. He's only been here for three seasons. But, right. you know, we got we, we, we talking money and we're talking contracts. I think the Titans will pay him for sure. But how much? Right. Adams' right. money? Or Debo Samuel, Debo Samuel right now, he's pissed off. Mm-hmm. He's removed his name and everything off the 49ers stuff on Instagram and everything. These, mm-hmm. these players do have some leverage like the NBA. They really do. Right. Right. It depends on who will pay them. If New York is willing to do it, if I'm A.J. Brown, they want to pay me, you know, $20 million a year and the Titans want to $16 million, mm-hmm. he might want to go to New York. Hopefully that's not the case. What's your thoughts on this, Jacques? Um. The well, first off, the the trade rumor, I believe, it, it is true from the Jets' perspective. Where I think they did give the house to the Titans, and the Titans, of course, right now can't afford to let AJ Brown go because if you do let him go, you don't have a number one receiver, and Bobby Trees is hurt right now, right? Right. And Marcus Johnson just signed with the San Francisco 49ers. so Thanks. right now the receiver room is looking looking super thin, and it's it's like thin as this paper, right? Yeah. So. Uh, that part, and then even with the contract piece, when you think of AJ, you want to think of a complete receiver, right? Which AJ, yep. he's getting there. He's learning, right? Yep. I think one of the best games I've seen him play, and he's played some he- – man, he's had some hell of a games, man. But I think his best game that, to me, solidified him as a all-around receiver. When we say all-around receiver, you catch high, low, mid, high, mid, low, right? Yep. You, you get the contested catches. You are catching 10, 11, 12 balls a game, I mean, a game, right? Yep. That's Devontae Adams, right? That's Mike Evans. That's D Hop. Those are those type of receivers, right? And we grew up in an era of football where we've seen the greats, Larry Fitzgerald, Jerry Rice, and Tim Brown, uh, Randy Moss. We grew up to look, actually have a time to look at great receivers that should have got paid what these receivers are getting paid now, but we know how the market is. But when you think of the contract, Vrabel uh, did iterate that he, as long as he's there, he's not getting traded, right? Yep. Now, will the Titans have the money to pay him what he wants to get paid? Is he worth 16, 17, 18, almost $20 million a year, right? The yep. value of receiver has gone up so tremendously. It's almost, it's, it's actually insane. Thank you, Jacksonville, right? Jacksonville messed the market up. The typical thing that Jacksonville does, they tend to mess up everything they touch. And, and you're going to go sign Christian Kirk. So like you said, we had an offline discussion. And Hawk was saying, man, uh, A.J. Brown's doing this. He said, man, we're going to have to give this man the franchise, the way, how much money. And how emotional that A.J. Brown is on Twitter. AJ, A.J. sees these things, right? A.J.'s paying attention. AJ knows. So if if let me say this, it'll also dictate. It's, it'll tell me a lot with what they do in the draft. And I know we're not in the draft talks right now, even though it's draft season and guys will get there. 
But just a small thing, I'm gonna give you a, a little taste real quick. If the Titans get like a trailing Burks, but I, I don't think he's gonna fall to the Titans. But if he happens to get him, he's AJ Brown, Debo Samuels, and uh, uh, just mixed together. If them, them two had a baby, you got trailing Burks, right? <laughs> that like straight up, yeah. like that's what you get. So if you get him, that tells me that the Titans are looking like I don't know London Drake as well. The Titans are looking like well, kind of, and if they perform too. Hi, right, we ain't got to pay you this much. We're going to give you this is what we're going to give you. If you don't take it, then boom, because you still got to pay Jeffrey Simmons, right? And yeah. honestly, I think that's the most important thing. And I'm not saying it sounds crazy what I'm saying. Jeffrey is a, is a, is a once in a lifetime player, right? Yep. He's a once in a generational talent. He's almost like Aaron Donald. Right. And he's just going, he's just, as age gets there, he's just going to keep getting better and better and better and better. We got to pay right. him too. Yep. That's right. So, did you think it's not fair to him? That that we shining the light on AJ, but we're not looking at that that at, at Jeffrey Simmons as well. So you got to take that in 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 equation. So if AJ really wants to win and win a champ, right? He can say, "Well, guys, I'll take this, and we can ride and we can ride this ship." But if he only thing if he if he wants the money, which I got to know, he got to feed his family. Titans might not pay him that much, so he might go to the Jets. Elijah Moore is his best, one of his good friends, so it wouldn't surprise. Let me say this. If, he, if at the end of the season they couldn't get a contract going, it wouldn't surprise me. But I think they will give him the money that he wants because, case in point, look at Harold Landry. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Yep. So the Titans are known for rewarding their players that do great things, right? So as long as AJ comes out this year and he shows out, you good. Yep. He got you. Man, You like right. you said, 1,300 yards, 102, 103 catches, bro. You got your money. You got but, your money, bro. Hey, but I'm going to say this. What I need to see with him, I need to see him, it, one, be to have a healthy season, okay? And I know that's, that's hard to do. Two, when it's time to take over games, and I know it's hard to say because we do got Tannehill at quarterback, but two, Facts. when it's time to take over games and it's time to say, hey, AJ, we don't need you to drop balls in key moments, right? Yep. When it's time to take over this game, we're playing the Houston Texans in the rain, and all the receivers are hurt. You're my number one receiver. You're supposed to perform, right? So when it's time to step up, if he can do that, then pay the man. But I know the Titans fan base feels indifferent, and they look at the body of work, which I'm not discrediting his body of work, yeah. but I'm like with you, Devontae Adams' money or we pay you here, right? Yep. The middle tier. But if you're in a 60 percentile, I don't know, bro. So and, and also I'd say this. I'll say this, too. He is a franchise receiver, right? For sure. So with him being a franchise receiver, the Titans can't let him go. They got to pay him. So I ultimately think he'll get what he wants because of the 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 thing that happened with Harold Landry. It's just how much he wants. And then all these other receivers like Tyreek Hill getting paid. Um, Devontae Adams went to the Raiders. I mean, these receivers are getting crazy, crazy, crazy contracts. I've never seen nothing like it. The Rams playing Madden. The Rams ain't got no – their salary cap is off. If you ever play Madden, you can turn your salary cap off. <laughs> they, they, they salary cap is all the way off. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on it, bro. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Interesting for sure, for sure. And I don't know if, you know, everybody, you know, understands what we're trying to say, but at the end of the day, numbers match numbers, right? One plus one right. equals two. You bring in them numbers next year, hey, that salary's coming with you too, man. It's all about productivity exactly. in the long haul for sure. Yes, agreed, agreed. So so speaking of the Titans being in the news, as we said as well, so today a lot of news about Mike Malarkey, the former head coach for the Tennessee Titans, um, who made a mention on a podcast that um, when he was hired, as the coach, or he was interviewing for the coach, uh, pos coaching position for the Titans, he already knew he had the job. He already knew that. And then he was informed that, you know, they'll have to do some more interviews. But for the most part, those interviews was a waste of time. And it was really based on the Art Rooney rule, for those who don't know, is the opportunity to interview African-American coaches in every team, you know, to at least interview one. I, and I think it's one. Uh, and, you know, the Titans had to do that, you know, at that time. And, you know, Mike Malarkey, who, you know, was let go. I'm sure he has some, some, some harsh things to say about the Titans. He let, the, he let it go today. He said hey, he thought it was trash. And uh, so, Jacques, I mean, you know, what do you think? I mean, it's Ray, Ray Horton's claim, um, you know, upon this. 
Uh, Steve Wilkes is also a part of that as well as this new claim with Brian Flores. They're going to be part of this uh, this lawsuit. So what do you think, man? <laughs> so we, we, we never talk about stuff like this on our, on our podcast, right, on the channel. We just don't. But when it hits your backyard, you have no choice but to talk about it, right? And I, I, I believe it. I, I believe it. It's just, it is what it is. Like, it's almost to the point where the Rooney rule was put in place because African-American coaches couldn't get the opportunity to get the head coaching jobs. Now, like I said, back in our day, we've seen black coaches, head coaches, like Mike Singletary, uh, Dennis uh, Allen. Um, it was a couple of more, too, man, that's out there, but just not too many, right? It's a small percentage. And the talent that you got out there, I can make an argument from uh, Eric Benenemy from uh, the Chiefs. Look what he's done. He's won a Super Bowl. The guy's it, it's gotten Patrick Mahomes where he needs to be. He got that offense clicking, but he still doesn't – he just doesn't have a head coaching job, right? Yep. So with the Ray Horton thing, only thing the ruling rule is, is it's almost a here. We're going to interview you because we have to, right? right? We have to check a box, and we're going to interview, right? Yep. It's a, it's a, it's all you're doing is checking a box. So what the Titans did to Malarkey, what's that saying? Be careful what you do to people while you're going up. Because if you mess them up while you're going up, you got to see them same people when you're coming down. Facts, no paper. And he still, when he got fired and how he got fired after winning a playoff game, that to me told me, and I, and I knew this was going to happen. I said, that's not John Robinson's guy. Okay. Nine times out of ten, majority of these coaches and these owners know who they want as a head coach before they even know it. Matter of fact, they're grooming them right now. Yep. He can th that that young man can be in college as a as a linebackers coach, and he might say, "Hey, he has he can be a leader of men, right? Where we're gonna get you a coaching job, right? Just play your cards right. I'm gonna give you this, and I'm gonna give you that, and I'm gonna give you this. Well, we know as being black men, we know, hey." We got to fight a little bit harder, right? And it's the truth, right? Just saying the truth. Don't shoot the messenger, okay? So with Ray Horton's what he's saying, yeah, I believe it. I believe that they did have Malarkey hired first. And then they just interviewed Horton just to say, hey, we did it. Here's the Rooney rule. Now, you got to be careful with that because now what's happening? Now you got a lawsuit that the Titans are probably, I don't know if they're going to win. I don't know if they're going to lose, right? Yep. But if you have more coaches coming out saying the same thing, then it has some validity to it. And we know we, 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 in our normal jobs, in our normal lives, this happens. This happens. This is not no, this is not no fairy tale, guys. Okay. This is not a fairy tale situation. This, we can speak from experience. This happens. And I've heard the argument too, where, well, we got to hire the best candidate, right? Yep. If he's not the best candidate at that time, then, huh? Well, if you don't give that candidate a shot, to at least propose what he's going to do, then how do you know who's the best candidate if you already have the perceived notion that you're already going to pick that particular person before you even give him a shot? You see what I'm saying? Yep. So we can say with the Brian, Brian Flores, that joker took, he had them jokers on a seven-game winning streak, right? Yep. <laughs> Until we broke the winning streak. A seven-game winning streak, and then boom, he gets let go like that. What does that tell me? At this point, the NFL don't care. They don't care. The NFL don't care. Yep. So that's my thoughts, man. What about you? Some great points, man. There's some awesome, awesome points. And, you know, in my research that I've done today about Ray Horton, I see a lot of folks on Twitter, even, you know, folks like, say, Jared Stillman, that was saying that Ray Horton was not a good defensive coordinator, things of that nature. Okay. I, that I'm not sure. You know, it, even if he wasn't, I get that. That's cool. Um, but – Ray Horton did get an opportunity, you know, to be a part of the interview process. And normally in an interview process, you interview everybody before you make a decision. And what's sad is, is that, you know, my, from my understanding is when he, he was in Phoenix, when he got a call to do an interview and it was very short notice, and they had already interviewed Malarkey and uh, Doug Marone. They had already interviewed them. And on the way to Nashville, he walks into the, uh, into the, uh, going into the office to get interviewed, Mike Malarkey had just kind of walked out and they walked past each other. And he was saying that, you know, he saw Malarkey was kind of odd. Like the, the presence was odd as if like, what is this? Right. And there was already rumors that the Titans were thinking about hiring him. 
So they still were interviewing people. But from Ray Horton, they were saying that he was saying that it was pretty much a sham interview. It was really a force. Like, we got to do this. We mm-hmm. already know what we want, but we got to do this. And it's it's a shame that it has to be like that. And, right. you know, and that does happen a lot with, you know, with African-American cultures. That's what happens. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, that's, it's a life thing that does happen to us. It, it, those type right. of things do happen. So, uh, you know, I think more than anything, you know, Ray Horton, you know, with his case, you know, I, hopefully he has enough evidence of those things happening. I don't doubt that that happened. I do think it did happen. And, um, you know, it's it's a sad situation because, you know, you bring people in, you interview in the hopes to say, okay, even if you felt Mike Malarkey was your guy, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's ironic he's not your coach anymore, mm-hmm. right? Right. But if you thought he was your guy, cool. But you still want to interview to see if you can beat him. I mean, mm-hmm. I interview people at my job. I might have a favorite. And I'm like, yeah, this guy's gonna be great, but I'm not gonna sit there saying nobody can beat him. I want the right. absolute best. And if I already have it as an interview slotted in, in for you to do that, then I'm gonna allow the process to take place. And so, you know, my hope is that it, it takes place, regardless if people might think Ray Hoard was not the greatest coach. Who who knows? But apparently, the Titans and other teams at least gave him an opportunity to say, hey, we do want to interview you at least. Mm-hmm. And he at least got to that threshold. And if you're gonna right. let, allow that to happen, let it happen. Let it be natural and let it take place. So right. um, Steve Wilkes had, went through the same thing. He was a head coach for the Cardinals. He think he got let go like maybe a year and a half or maybe two years. Now, I will right. say I don't I don't have the report of, of his record with Arizona that I don't know. Um, but, right. you know, he's a part of that claim as well, too, as far as, as, far as him being unfairly justed. Uh, you know, just let the, law, the, the legal court system deal with it and things like right. that. But it, for what we know of Ray Horton or whatever, you know, it's, you know, it's kind of right. sad, but we'll see what it, happens. It's almost like, what's the point of the Rooney Rule? I would rather for them to throw the Rooney Rule out, Ro- Rooney Rule out, because it's a waste of time. It's a waste, to be honest with you. I, I look at it this way: it's almost like, like you said, if I if I'm walking into an interview, and I kind of already, you can know how you can feel the vibe. And if I can feel the vibe, I'm a hey, thank you, but no thank you. I can take my service, and this is how I, I just think like this: I can I can go somewhere else, right? It's almost like, well, what's the point of the Rooney Rule? If if you just gonna say here, we're just doing it just so, right? Mm-hmm. What's the point? Right. What's the point of it? You might as well just say the NFL might as well just just rebrand it or cut it all together and figure out, hey, how can we bridge the gap to get the talent in here for African American coaches, right? How can we bridge this gap? Because you look at my, you, they can make the argument for Mike Tomlin. They're like, oh, Mike Tomlin's been there with. How long has Mike Tomlin been in with the Steelers? A long time. I, I don't years? know the number. I think it's a little bit longer than that. I, I'd okay. say north of 15. 15. Did he win a Super Bowl with them? Mm-hmm. He has. Okay. So, case in point, right? And they can look at him and be like, well, he's won a Super Bowl. He's been we, – we've done our, our, our thing. But if you look at all the owners, it, there's not, that's not a black owner nowhere, right? You got Shad Khan in, in Jacksonville. That's it, Right? So you all were, you almost to the point where you know what you know what to expect, right? You know what to expect as a coach, as a player. You know what to expect. <laughs> so it's almost like it's almost like, well, I know what to expect. I'm gonna come in here. Do I have a shot? Maybe. Do I not have a shot? Huh? I don't know, right? So I, I, I treat the. Let me say this. I treat the NFL almost. Players got to treat the NFL like a business. And I understand when players. And even coaches come with the highest price tag that they can, right? Yep. Because it's almost like the NFL is going to spit you up and it's going to chew you out. So you got to treat that as if, right? It's almost like doing prison time. And I hate to compare it like this, but it's almost like saying, hey, I'm going to come in and do my nine, to, my, my five to 10, if I can make the 10, but at least five, get as much money as I can, get out, invest my money, move here, move this way, move this way. Yeah, I play NFL football. It was cool while it lasted. But the NFL is a shady business. It's a, it's a business. And they've had shady practices from the concussion thing, from this, hiding this, the flake gate. They've done some shady stuff. And they try to clean up their image. And them trying to clean up their image, it's just not working. So I just think they, they just need to figure out. And I know um, now they got the rule. What's the rule? Look, there was a new rule that came out. What's the new rule um, that – they, they had at the owners meeting where I think they had, they now have to hire a ma- a, a minority uh, a candidate. They have a minority has to be on the staff. 
So don't be surprised if you see more women on the staff. Don't be surprised if you see more a color on the staff. That that's that's something that they're trying to do. But I don't want to be the pity hire, if that makes sense, right? Hire me for my talents. And our case in point, Eric Benemy. That man is talented. Why does he have a head coaching job? I've heard where well, he doesn't interview very well. Well, his work speaks for, right? Mm-hmm. Look at his look at his body of work. So that's my thoughts, bro. I got you. I got you, man. <laughs> same, for, same for me too. Same for me yeah. as well, man. So, so cool, man. All right. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is the show, folks. As always, thank you for tuning in to the show. Um, we, of course, when the draft comes, we got we got a lot of fire coming through for the draft. Cannot wait for that, man. That's going to be awesome. So make sure to tune in on that, um, as well as again. You can always subscribe to the channel. If you have not subscribed, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, as well as check us out on Instagram. Uh, check us out at Tennessee Titans Weekly, as well as on Twitter at Titans Weekly 24-7, uh, as well on email at Tennessee Titans Weekly at gmail.com. Check us out, y'all. Yep. And when you do check us out, subscribe, uh, uh, subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and then cut your notification bells on us. And des- definitely love when we, when we post content on Apple and when we go live on YouTube or post any videos on YouTube. So just spe- especially do that. And like you said, we got the draft coming up. Um, it's going to be a fun show. We do this show every year. Uh, I don't know what Hawks going to pick. He don't know what I'm going to pick. So and I think this draft might be a little bit challenging because it's just all over the board. So I know next time we go live, I know there's going to be a lot of questions about the yes, draft. So sure. just just I've been doing some homework on some pieces and, and quarterbacks and, and just pieces that we need, but specifically quarterback. I got some heat for that, man. So, hey, Hawk, take us out, bro. Okay, man. We hope everybody has a good rest of their day, good rest of their week as well. And weekend, as we always do and as we always say, Jacques, facts, no paper.